Hey people, how are you today? So um, I just want to get into the word today. What I've really got on my heart to share with you is about transitioning into fulfillment. And I guess that is the word for the season is about entering in. Um, you know, the Lord has really has his pro prophetic mouthpieces uh, hammering this point home to his people to trans that were transitioning into the new and you know i've had this scripture from isaiah 43 18 to 19 on my heart for what 17 years <laughs> so uh behold i'm you know don't remember the former things of old behold i'm doing a new thing and i feel like i've been a crack record for the past you know probably 15 years um that god is doing a new thing but you know he's very gracious and he prepares us he renews the wine skin he prepares us to enter into to the transitioning of what he's wanting to do in this season and uh some of you i know have held prophetic words you've held promises for many years that still haven't come to their full manifestation but know that when a word is brewed for a long time and when you've been faithful in the season of waiting and, and, and aligning and what would you say, transitioning, that it, it's always uh, uh, for a greater purpose. Like Isaac, when Isaac was birthed, it was for four nations. It wasn't just so Abraham could have a son. You know, so when you when when the word of the Lord sits for a while there's for it's for a greater purpose outside of our own life so um the word word today that god really has on my heart is behold i'm doing a new thing will you not see it and i just really i felt the word of the lord uh coming to me these last days again about this topic of seeing the new thing and how god's wanting to fulfill his word but god fulfills his word sometimes outside of our understanding our conformity you know he he doesn't conform to man's ways god's bigger than us you know we know that but um the lord wants to fulfill his word in his way so i just want to read isaiah 43 18 to 19 for those of you who don't know it, but i'm sure you all do do not earnestly remember the former things neither consider the things of old behold i'm doing a new thing now it springs forth do you not perceive and know it and will you not give heed to it i will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert now you know, Ecclesiastes says that there's nothing new under the sun, but for every generation, there is a new thing of God. And the Lord, I looked in the Hebrew, what, what is a new thing? Lord, does it just mean new? Well, yeah, it means new. But in the lexicon um, dictionary, it actually explains it further to what it means. It means fresh. God's pouring out fresh. He's doing a fresh thing, but it also says fresh for this year. So, whenever god uses time words it's a seasonal word so there's it could be a seasonal word could be a generation long it doesn't mean this physical year it can mean a generation long it could mean a series of years it could mean a series of months or days but in the lexicon it says it's fresh for this year so i just want to say to you that god is doing a new thing in our generation god is doing a new thing in this season god is doing a new thing for for to fulfill his word in this season fresh for this season and i really feel like the lord is saying to his people don't look back and don't remember the former things of old it doesn't mean that the old was bad it doesn't mean that the old was wrong he's just saying in order to walk into the new you can't look back and sometimes you know we can you know those that are really contending for a move of god corporately not just our individual promises in our lives but we're, we're contending for the harvest we're contending for that which god has promised that he's going to pour out in this time and in this hour sometimes because we don't have a grid for it we look back we look back to old revivals we look back to the old way god performed his word now god there's a place for that i'm not saying there's not a place to to study revival and history of revival there is a place to study history hands down for sure but what i feel the lord is saying in this season is we can't live in the old wine we can't all the glory days and and just oh you know remember the glory days in the sense and then try and relive it and recreate it for this new season because god actually wants to increase we go from glory to glory and he wants to give us more in this season than what we had in the past season but there's a key 
and there's a transitioning into the new and like the children of Israel came out of wilderness into the promised land the Lord gave an instruction for them and he said to them leave a space between the ark of the covenant where the priests are bearing it when you're crossing the Jordan and the people why because they've not gone this way before and so I feel that's where we're at we're going into a new thing God has promised us um, that he's going to pour out his spirit but th there's a way that we're going and and sometimes we don't we we actually aren't perceiving the way and, and the Lord says in here in Isaiah 43 he says don't remember the former things of old I'm doing a new thing and then he goes on to say now it's springing forth so springing forth means actually there's some evidence there's some budding forth that's coming place coming in place but he says do not don't you perceive and know it and will you not give heed to it so there's actually something that in our part is a is we have to recognize what God's doing and the way that God moves there has to be a seeing of it in order to move into it because if we don't see we won't know and we won't recognize and then we won't move into it now for the I'll, I'm gonna get more into it I'm gonna explain more of what I mean I'll give you examples but I just want to lay a foundation to what I'm trying to say here is that in order to move into the new we have to see it and the reason that Jesus wasn't perceived and recognized a lot when he came to those to the religious and all of that he didn't come in the way that they thought he would and you know I was I was reading something of Rick Joyner's the other day and I just really felt to share this in line with what I'm saying and I, it just really it really hit me and really was like apprehended my heart Rick was saying the, uh, he was talking about how the way God fulfills prophecy is not really, if you look all through scripture, if you look through the Bible and even in our own life, the way God fulfills what he says is very different. It looks very different in the fulfillment. And I guess this is the crux of what I'm wanting to talk to you about today is the way God fulfills what he says. And sometimes we get stuck in the way and we don't recognize that actually God's trying to take us outside of what we have orchestrated sometimes when God says he's going to do something we have all of our conditions attached to how God's going to do it and actually it's the how is actually God's business the how is his way and sometimes we put our hope now what is hope hope is expectation sometimes we expect God to do the things he's promised in a certain way but actually that's misplaced hope and so our hope is not in the how our hope is in the what so our hope has got to be in what God has said not how he's going to do it <clears throat> sometimes we get disappointed because he does it he's taking longer than we think he's using using instruments or people that we didn't think he would in our life or he's doing things in a different way and and we, we 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 get disappointed and discouraged because we're not understanding the way and so i'm going ahead of myself here but i just want to backtrack again back to what rick joiner was saying and he was saying that you know prophecy um fulfilled never looks like what we envision when the prophecy is first released and this is my summary okay these aren't his exact words but this is my summary of what he was saying in other words God fulfills his word in ways that aren't conventional and don't look how our preconceived minds tend to evaluate it okay now he went on to say so that if prophecy fulfilled when Jesus first came to the earth how we felt the first coming of the Messiah didn't look like how they thought it would look like then how much more in the second coming that Jesus is going to come in ways like he's prophesied he's said but it's going to look different to how we've all create like worked it out to be and so what I want to do I don't want to talk about that that's not my message today but I just wanted to to bring that in is that we actually put conditions on God and how to how he fulfills his word in our life and even in revival and even in ways that God moves of God and how he wants to move by his spirit you know we put conditions because we don't have a grid for how God wants to do it but we need to leave a space between the ark as we're crossing over and us we need to be led by the spirit of God because what happens is you know when 
when we we want to we want a formula we want to put a plan when god says you know he's going to do this so we we start right now little plan out now our little formula but that's not how it works and so god moves outside of our plan and our formula he moves outside of our structures he moves outside of our traditions and cultures even God moves outside of our cultures. Do you know that our culture can be a roadblock to revival? Our culture can actually hinder him moving because we actually exalt sometimes our culture above the word of God. And I just really feel there's an anointing on that, that, you know, tradition and culture can really hinder the flow of God in our life. You know, you look at the the Jews in the time when Jesus, Jesus was manifest. Um, what was he doing? He was... Um, you know, they harvested on the Sabbath. They were out in the fields. I mean, it was offensive to their natural minds. And sometimes, you know, when God comes in new expressions and new ways, he offends our natural mind. And it, and, and it can be a roadblock or a stumbling block to actually what God wants to do in our life. And so what I really feel like the Lord is saying today is he's wanting to open our eyes to recognize and to know. So, so uh, where have I got that written here? to know he's uh, I, I had it written down before about I'll find it in a second I've got lots of notes here and I really want to go through them but when when it talks about you know seeing and recognizing I think it's down here further I yes um, in the King James it says will you not know it so that's another word of saying seeing it recognizing it knowing it means to ascertain by seeing to discern so we've got to discern by the spirit not by our mind not by our carnal flesh you know we we can't we can't discern by the natural senses and, and, and reasonings of the flesh, but we've got to discern the new thing by the Spirit of God. You know, you, you look at it, right? Joshua taking the people over the promised land, and Joshua's a skilled warrior. You know, he's done all that before. He's fought many battles and had many victories. And God leads him over to the promised land, and they're about to have the battle of their life, basically, because it's the fulfillment of promise. And now God changes it all up and says, well, I, I, I'm just about to do a new thing. And Joshua's like, you could imagine, well, it doesn't say this in scripture, but sometimes we go, but hang on, Lord, I'm skilled. I, I know all what I'm doing. Why do we have to change it up now? Why do we have to move it up? And God's like, yeah, well, just because I just want to do it my way, because my way is, is higher than your way, you know? And so the angel of the Lord comes to Joshua and gives him the instruction. Okay, so Joshua, this time, you're not going to actually go out and fight with the arm, you know, with swords. You're actually going to walk around the city seven times. And then you get, and on the seventh day, you're going to walk around again seven times and, and shout out, loud at the end and could you imagine that instruction Joshua was like okay um let me just tell you for a sec my people are going to think I'm crazy if we do this and so you know it doesn't say that in scripture but could you imagine you know that sometimes we think oh hang on a minute that just is a bit side out outside our box hang on a minute that doesn't flow with our format that doesn't flow with our plan. That doesn't flow with what I knew. And that's the thing. We're moving into something new. And when it's new, it's new. There's no grid for it. We don't We don't have a grid for it. And I just really feel that many of you are on the threshold of breakthrough. Many of you are on the threshold of giving birth to promises. You know, even with Abraham and Sarah, they're one of my favorites at the moment. I keep bringing them up. But I really feel like we're in a season of birthing Isaacs. And so, you know, you look at Sarah. She was on the edge of mocking God. When the angel of the Lord came to Abraham and said, in this season, you're going to give birth to your Isaac. You know, Sarah's in the back laughing. Why? Because it just offended her mind. It was like she'd probably given up on it. You know, she probably thought, well, I don't know, God, but it's not coming through this body. You know, maybe it was a new thing, God causing a 99-year-old woman to conceive. Maybe it was a new thing that I think she was 99 was she anyway you can write it here um if I've got that wrong but anyway her age maybe she maybe she you know that was a new thing that God was going to move on a barren place and actually not just even a barren womb not a young barren womb but an older woman maybe she felt a bit embarrassed have you thought of that? Maybe she felt a bit embarrassed of how God wanted to fulfill his word that, oh, I'm old, how embarrassing, you know, and then she had to have the strength to give birth to the Isaac, you know, and sometimes we can be, you know, God can challenge our, uh, our self-preservation 
in in wanting to give birth to our promises and wanting to actually fulfill his word because he wants to do it in a place where he gets magnified and he gets glorified and you know sometimes even in the church you know I've heard many words come forth, you know, our services are going to look very different. Well, well, they are. And what that looks like, we can't make it happen. We can't make the new happen. All we have to do is be positioned to allow God to flow. And when he flows, to recognize it and just flow with him. You know, I was in this church. I went to a service once oh, a, a while ago. And, and, you know, I guess the new thing has been really stirring on people's hearts. And they're really wanting, you know, the new thing and they're wanting and sometimes in that there can be a zeal to kill everything of the old and to to move ahead of God and there was this one service I went to I think they were so desperate for the new thing um, they got all the seats and they moved them aside and put them all around the edges so that it would offend the religious well you know I think that's just trying to help God do the new thing we yes we can be frustrated in waiting but we can't we can't do the old but we can't we can't try and do the new we have to let the holy spirit break forth into what he wants to do and you know it also says in matthew it says that you know we can't put a new gar a new patch on an old garment because the new patch will actually tear from from the old garment and so if we're trying to do the new still with the old we're going to actually spoil the new you know, and so God is in the middle it, it, right now, I believe, in, in preparing the wineskin. He's renewing the wineskin and he's causing, and our minds really are part of that wineskin of yielding to the way of the Lord. You know, there was one example, I just want to share this with you about how God's been really dealing with me these last years in, in um, expecting the new and just to recognize how to recognize the new. And we were in one of our services, um, you know, a while ago and, and, I just was taking the announcements. We don't really do announcements, but I was doing the announcement of something. And I think I could have even been asking for testimonies. And next minute, the Holy Spirit just landed on me so strong. Now, you know, we're so, you know, we've, we're quite familiar, which is, you know, the, the word of the day with his presence. We've, you know, to me, that was nothing new, him landing on me like that. And so, but what happened was I didn't recognize something he was doing because I was too familiar. And what happened was, and this was a real uh, t uh, lesson for me, and that's why I really want to share it with you, that because I'm so familiar with his presence, him landing on me so strong wasn't really um, something out of the ordinary. You know, I was just, oh, thank you, Lord, you've arrived. Thank you, Lord, you've arrived. Ra ra, and what did I do? I just went. Okay, next we're doing the worship, and just started the worship. What happened? Holy Spirit lifted off me in the worship, and it was re I really struggled in the worship, and the meeting was okay. I mean, He came, His presence was there because He honors our heart. His presence was there, and at the end of the service, uh, you know, and and the people got blessed, and He still moved. But on the way home, I knew something wasn't really right, and I I, I debrief with Holy Spirit every every meeting. Okay, Lord, you know, I just do. I debrief with him. And I said to him, Lord, what, what happened? You came so strong on me. And then and and then it, the meeting just didn't go. It, it just, he said, because you didn't flow with me. He said, you went back to your program and your ritual. You went back to your structure and what, and your format. And, and I, and it just, it really just struck me. And he said, Anita, if you, there was a doorway, there was a window. If you had a just looked, that's what he said to me. If you had a just looked, in that moment and had a look in the spirit and stop for just a moment you might have seen what i wanted to do in that service and i would have broken out in fresh new ways and i just and now i didn't feel condemned because holy spirit when he speaks he doesn't condemn you but i felt really convicted and i repented and asked him forget for forgiveness but i knew that he was educating me and he's preparing me and how and i know that he's doing that in this season to all of you out there as well because for those that really want him and want him to move in and and really just want him to come then God is really positioning us and teaching us and showing us and he's really uh, preparing us and sometimes our the way we do things can just be a blocker to that and so you know we've got to be sensitive to his ways and even those that know him and are familiar with him there still have to be a reverence for him and when he comes in the moment see God just comes suddenly he doesn't he doesn't say like I do I'm going to be on Facebook live in five minutes like 
he comes suddenly. Our job is to prepare and position. And that meeting that he came on me, which wasn't actually out of the ordinary, but when he lifted from me, that was out of the ordinary because I just assumed that we were just going to flow in a certain way. But God's wanting us to be tuned in and tuned into a frequency more tuned in than ever before so that we're actually going to hit targets. We're actually going to not miss things, but we're going to nail things and we're going to hit things because those that are um, sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. And so I really feel God wants you to hit it. He wants you to walk into your destiny. He wants you to walk in and hit things in this season and not miss things and not have delays. You know, Lana was even sharing the other day in a prophecy she wrote out, she was talking about, you know, if we don't yield to what God's doing, we, there will be delays. We, we've got, there's an urgency in my heart that we can't expect and, and, and just, um, what would be the word? Assume. Assume that God's going to do things in certain ways. But actually, we need to be positioned and be sensitive and discern that what God is doing, he's doing it in a new way. This is really coming out different to what I thought it would. But anyway, because transition can be awkward. You know, transition can be awkward because we don't have a grid for it. But we've just got to, it, we've got to move with him, not ahead of him and not lag behind him, but move with him in his timing. And that's what I just really feel. You know, the Lord is really on that right now. Because let's go back to the hope, right? Hoping in the way. So, you know, Abraham, it says in Romans, where is it? Romans chapter four, because I like reading the scripture, how it, how it's said let me just see if i can find my romans chapter 4 scripture or oh, maybe i've got lots of notes here i like my notes because i like to know that i've delivered everything that the lord has said but anyway romans romans 4 it's it talks about you know when all hope in the natural when all hope in the natural for abraham there was no hope in the natural you know sarah's womb was barren they were but beyond age bearing ages no all hope gone but he, he didn't let go that God is not a liar. He didn't let go of what God said, but he let go of the way. You know, he created the Ishmael. He, he, you know, Lord, you're taking longer than I thought. But Abraham hoped in faith. And that's what I believe the key to transition is in this season is to hope in faith faith to hope in what he said that he will do that's the what and he will do what he said he will do if we have eyes to see and ears to hear what the spirit of the lord is saying you know jesus even said blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god they will have eyes to see pure in heart just means as i said and i, I harp on this but i really feel that god's wanting to say this pure is not perfect pure is having no agenda you know you might you know you might do things miss it sometimes but pure in heart it doesn't mean that you're not pure in heart pure in heart means lord i want it your way i want your your will and your way pure in heart is i don't have an agenda i'm not going to make this happen i'm not going to you know exalt my flesh in making this happen i'm not going to you know jump on this but lord i want you i want i just want you and that's the pure in heart and they will see god they will recognize and they will discern him when he comes you know because we we want to we want to see him. We want to see the new ways he's expressing himself. You know, look, what are, what what can be some examples of what God's doing in this season in the new way? We're seeing women rising to the forefront. God's releasing women. We're seeing children being used in in dimensions they've never been used. You know, we're seeing we're seeing um, God move in the creative realm, in 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 sight and sound, in movies, in pictures, in. In, in creative dimensions, you know, God is moving fresh. And if we're not going to see it because we're back stuck in the old, then we're not going to embrace it and mo actually move into it and be a part of it. You know, even in intercession, you know, God's moving fresh in intercession. There, there's For new seasons, there's new expressions because there's new, there's new, what would you call it? There's a greater glory. There's a great, we go from level to level. And when we go into a greater glory, there's a great, there's a new expression. There's a greater yieldedness. There's less of us and more of him, you know, and you think about it. Like when um, Jesus was ascended and before that, he said to the disciples, you know, go wait, go wait for the new. They had no grid for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They had no grid for 
for what he was for the outpouring of God. They, they, but the Lord said, go and wait. And I believe that's where we're at in this season is we're not to create. We're not to make stuff happen. We're not, we've got, we've got to flow and we've got to wait. Sometimes the waiting, you know, and, and sometimes when things are being done just a bit different, um, you know, maybe, you know, maybe like even in our services, it's like the way that, you know, we used to do things in the past. We, 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 God has said to us, you not to create the old. You can't try and get the new wine in the old wine skin. You can't set up a new way of doing, an old way of doing, like trying to do it the old way and expect the new to come. It's, it's not that. And sometimes there's a stretching in waiting for the new because he pulls you out of your own ability. And he pulls you out of your own ability so that you can flow in his ability because you can't do both. Your ability can't flow with his ability. And so he pulls you out of your ability so that you can flow in his ability. And then heaven, all heaven breaks loose. But that's where the stretching is. The stretching is in the transitioning. The stretching is in the crossing the Jordan. The stretching is in the leaving a bit of a space and the waiting. And those disciples, when they went up to the upper room, they waited. What are they waiting for? They didn't know. They were just waiting for the promise. And that's where we're at right now. We're waiting. We've got keys. We've got insights. But what, what we can tend to do is then put a map and a plan to it. And, and I just really feel like the Lord's saying, get rip up your maps and plans and just wait for the fresh instruction like Joshua had and then move in that. You need a fresh instruction with a fresh unction. You can't do stuff without unction. So don't try doing things without an unction on it. If there's an unction on it, well, heaven will break loose. But if there's no unction and it's just your good ideas, well, then it's it's not going to fulfill what God's wanting. And then you're going to get disappointed because your hope's in the way. And, and, you know, hope does not disappoint, the Bible says. And sometimes I've thought, but Lord, I'm disappointed. And it's because I'm hoping in a way. My expectation is in God to do something that I think in a certain way. I know I'm harping, I'm repeating myself, but maybe we need to have it repeated. <laughs> but getting back to our inner session has changed. You know, the way that we do, the way that we flow in the spirit, the way that, you know, even my my, my closest friend, she's my, inner, we're, we're intercessor partners and, you know, we've been interceding for, gosh, I don't know, 17, 18 years and together. And so we, we really, you know, we've got a great partnership in the spirit, but God's moving fresh on us. There's some, there's some out there stuff we're encountering and in a session that God, he's moving through sound. He's moving through different ways because there's, there's greater shifts we're experiencing, greater breakthroughs in our intercession than ever before, because we're, we're flowing into a new realm and it's less work. You know, we don't have to stand there and confess and decree and declare for a hundred hours. You just flow with the unction of God and then things move and things manifest. And that's what I really believe we're moving into, you know. We're moving into a higher realm. We're moving into a greater place. So anyway, I just want to encourage you that, you know, just to have your eyes open because you might be able to reap in places that you never thought you'd reap in. You know, you might be able to harvest in places you've never dreamed possible. But for those who have eyes to see and don't have an agenda attached to the way God wants to fulfill something in your life, you're going to see harvest fields that you've never seen before. And you're going to reap in places you've never thought or dreamed that you could reap. So um, it's a fresh thing. God's doing a fresh thing for this season. So um, I just encourage you to just ask the Lord to open the eyes of your understanding because that's another word uh, for will you not see it or recognize it is actually in the Hebrew understand it. So sometimes things they're, they're beyond our comprehension because we don't understand it. You know, just like when Jesus uh, told was telling them about his cross, how he was going to the cross or, and Peter's like, no, Lord, you're not doing that because you're going to set up a kingdom on this earth. And that's the carnal Carnal reasoning is going to kill off what God wants to birth by his spirit. And, 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 you know, if we have agendas, if we, if we, if we have reputation, if we have, um, you know, things that we don't want God to mess up how things look, you know, revival and, and the way God wants to move, well, well he's going to mess everything up. He always does. He, you know, because he wants, it's, it's God being God. It's not God you know, flowing in our plan. It's God being God. And that's what we all want him to be God. Well, we've got to just, you know, let him be God. So, um, you know, for those that, that want to fight and resist and, and, and they won't enter the promised land, just like the children of Israel, they just, they, they were stiff neck, hard hearted. 
and um, if you if you want to yield to the carnal way, because carnality, let me tell you, exalts the flesh. It's as simple, flat out as that. Carnality wants the flesh exalted, and it wants the flesh to feel good. And the, but the mind of the spirit, you read Romans eight. It's all about the mind of the spirit is life, but the mind of the flesh is is you know death, and corruption. So God is wanting his people to move by his spirit and move into the spirit, be people of the spirit and not stay in stagnant waters and do things with the arm of the flesh. So, you know, I just encourage you. I hope that this, I hope that um, you've, you know, that you can apply this to your life and that if God's moving in weird and wonderful ways, go with it. Go with how God's moving and, and just step outside your comfort zone and let him be God and not worry what people think and what people, you know, perceive. There's many prophecies that have been fulfilled in my life that have come and shocked me. And actually, there's one in particular that um, when God fulfilled it in my life, I wrestled with him for six months and I couldn't even sleep because I fought with him in the way it was manifesting because it was going to be a death to me. But actually, it was a fulfillment of a promise. And so, you know, sometimes it looks different to how God, um, how we perceive it to look. But it will, it, it won't ever, you know, before honor comes humility. And so there's a yieldedness. And I know I'm harping on this subject, but I just so want God's people to enter in and, and to what God has for them because it's by his spirit and it's not by the reasoning of the carnality of our limitations because all we want to do is limit God. We think we've got bright ideas, but really they're not bright ideas. God's God's the the bright spark. He's got the best ideas. So anyway, um, I just don't want to harp on. I think I've been going on long enough, but I just want you to be encouraged. It's not going to look. You know, if it's not going to look at John the Baptist, look at him. He didn't come, you know, he was wild and woolly. He didn't come in the corporate look. He wasn't polished. He wasn't, he didn't come to entertain, but he came as a threshing instrument to prepare the way of the Lord, to beat the mountains, hills like chaff. He came to level the, level the valleys. He came to make the crooked places straight and the rough places smooth. And sometimes what we call smooth, God calls rough. And sometimes what we call rough, God calls smooth. And because his ways are higher and they're not our ways and they're not our thoughts. And, you know, sometimes what we think is polished and, and corporate and pleasable to man, God wants to spew at, you know what I'm saying? So, um, Oh dear. I hope I didn't I hope I didn't step on too many toes, but anyway, love me because I I um I love you all and I love God's people and I don't have an issue with um I'm not, you know, don't think I'm having a go at anyone because I'm actually having a go at carnality. I'm not having a go at we've all got carnality. We've all got it. Paul addressed carnality in Romans 8. Paul addressed carnality in Corinthians. Paul addressed carnality all the way through because carnality is a hindrance to us being sons and daughters on this earth. So don't, you know, get offended and think I'm having a go at people because I'm talking to myself. We've all got carnality and we've all got th roadblocks in our mind and stumbling blocks and things where God wants to do things that offend us. But we've got, to, we've got to humble ourselves and let God move the way he wants. Strip off the cloak of reputation. Strip off the cloak of dignity. Just strip it off. Who cares? Because let me tell you, if you're going to be a person of the spirit, Paul said, if you're going to be a person of the spirit, you're going to have enemies. It's not a popularity contest. Let me tell you, ministry or doing anything great for God is not a popularity contest. But, but God will give you favor with those that you need favor with in order to get his kingdom established on this earth. But it's not a popularity club. It's not, you, you don't do things for the sake of looking good, feeling good and getting pats on the back. You do things that God's kingdom may be established and it may go broader and cutting roads that have never been walked and traveling and, and cutting through tracks where the river of God can flow to desert places. Because he says, you know, that, that I'm doing a new thing. I'm going to bust this new thing through the desert places through the wilderness places this this new thing's going to go to places where it's never been before and it's actually going to come out also of the barren place you look at John the Baptist he came from the wilderness he came from the barren place so um you know don't expect this place to come from the polished places don't expect God to move the look he can move through a widow he can move through um you know a homeless person he can move through don't look 
for the glamour doors. Don't look for, for things that are going to exalt the flesh, but look for God because God is God comes in humble places. God moves in humble places. And that's how Jesus was born. He was birthed in a stable. He wasn't birthed in a palace. He came to earth in a humble place. So that is a that is a, a principle of God that God, you know, birthing the Son of God on this earth, he came in a humble place. And that is the principle of God because before honor comes humility. But man wants Man wants the glory, the glamour, the glitz and the, the glow, <laughs> the G's. He does. We all do. You know, there's this heart of man and it has to be surrendered to the Lord that the, that the Holy Ghost can, it just has to lay low so that the Holy Ghost can just fly. Sorry, I had someone trying to ring me on my phone. <laughs> anyway, I best go. Um, I think I've shared enough. I've kept you long enough. Um, I love you all too. You're awesome. I don't mean to step on toes. I really don't. I don't mean to offend anybody um, because I'm just charging my phone. I always do this. It's probably just my prophetic. Um, I drive my husband mad, you know, because I leave places in places I can't find. And oh my God, he's really organized and I can be a bit, you know, I'm a bit prophetic. But um, anyway, so love you guys. Love you all. And know my heart. It's just to prepare the way of the Lord. My heart's to prepare you that you would just yield your heart and align your heart and that you would let God be God. You know, we've got, to, we've got to surrender in this hour. It's not time to muck around and play games. It's not time to play church. It's Playing church is not getting the harvest in. It's not time. God, they want authenticity and, and, and authenticity will challenge tradition. Authenticity will challenge religion. Authentic, because it's the heart of God. It's the flow of God. It's fresh. It's new. Authenticity. Be authentic. Be your radical self, you know. Um, just be who you are because God will anoint who you are, not a copycat. God doesn't anoint copycats. We've got not enough of copycats. Let's not be a copycat. Come on. We need the kingdom of heaven manifested and the kingdom of heaven will not manifest through copycats because God has made you original. God has made you unique so that you can flow and express a, a unique sound and expression of heaven. And we need to embrace each other. We need to love each other and love each other's expressions. Man, I'm going on today, aren't I? Sorry. Hope you's, um, anyway, if you can listen to it in parts. But um, yeah, look, let's just say it. Let's just, you know, let's get on with it. Let's get authentic. Let's just, look, molds, copycats. It's not, it's not going to cut it. It's look, if you're a pastor, if you're a leader, stop trying to copy the church down the road. That's doing whatever, be your tribe, be who you are, be your expression, be, be, be courageous enough to be who you are. Cause you know, it takes courage. It takes courage to be who you are. It takes courage to walk by faith. It, it doesn't, copycats doesn't take courage to do that because you just flow with all the salmon down the stream and be like everybody else. You know, now I'm not talking and endorsing rebellion here. So don't anyone go off on tangents and say I'm endorsing rebellion. I'm not at all. Accountability is, is ordered by God and true authority of heaven is when you're submitted under authority. I'm not endorsing rebellion. I'm endorsing authenticity. Okay, so, you know, you've got to be careful what you say on Facebook because people can run off on tangents and then say, Anita said this and Anita said that and, oh, goodness. So you've got to hear with the ears of the Spirit what I'm trying to say to you, right? So it's all about letting God be God and just we're channels, we're vessels of God. God moves through man. He doesn't wave a magic wand and just drop stuff out the sky. He prepares vessels and he moves through vessels because that's how he planned that he would do it. That's how he said he'll do it. We are sons on this earth to, um, we would take dominion of this earth. Anyway, man, I'm on my soapbox today. If my husband sees this, he's going to say, geez, you're on your soapbox. He always calls it my soapbox. Anyway, um, don't mean to be on any soapbox. Just want to love God's people and empower them, encourage them to be all they can be and move into all that God has for them. And if that means killing some dead, killing some golden calves on the way, well, I will. But those golden calves can stand in your way and, um, and they're a hindrance to, to the true pure rivers of God flowing in your life. And I know, I know you guys out there, you are on the edge um, of glory. I, was de I declare the kingdom. We're on the edge of glory. We're about to see him move like never before, you know. And so um, 
you're out you're on the threshold we're on the Jordan we're crossing the Jordan we're entering the promised land and we've got to take our possession by the Spirit of God and if it means walking around a building for seven times and shout and then do it okay so anyway be blessed love you guys I just I just thank you Lord that you're preparing your people in this hour you know you're preparing the wineskin you're preparing your bride you're preparing you're preparing you're preparing and that's what he's doing and God will take as long as it takes to prepare and prepare preparation is the longest thing you think of a wedding right I'm still going on you think of a wedding right like serious it takes longer to prepare for a wedding than the actual wedding day and so you know the preparation process can be long but God is a perfectionist and he likes to prepare his people so that will flow with what he wants to do in our lives so um love you guys there's there's lots of um good things ahead for you god is good and he wants to lead you into all good things um and you are awesome you, and i expect great things and god to break through and be strong for you so um you're awesome and just I champion you to keep going and let God be God. And if some things look weird and crazy, that God's doing a new thing, you go with it. Flow with it and let him break through and let him cause rivers to flow in the wilderness. Okay, guys, thanks for being with me. You've born with me today on my long post, but I love you. And I'll talk to you guys 